Hey hey, I'm Lasse and welcome back to another one of our concept tutorials. As some of you might know, our latest update provided a new watercolor brush and I'm here today to show you how it works. So let's get started and set up a brush we can play with. Notice that by default the layer sorting automatically creates a layer for each type of tool you set up. Stroke width and opacity work as usual. I find myself having the opacity around 50% most of the time. Now let's find a nice color for it and I'll start off by showing you some of the basics. First, I'll simply paint a horizontal stroke on the canvas. Like so. The watercolor brush is highly pressure sensitive, so by applying very little pressure, we get a much more transparent stroke of paint. If you're looking for even more dynamic strokes, you can tilt the stylus and get variable widths without the need to adjust anything. Next I'll introduce you to the vector qualities of our watercolor brush, but before that I'll double tap the eraser tool and start from scratch. Now let's just paint a simple blob here. Then select it and set this up to stretch mode. As you can see, the vector path we drew is preserved as usual. Set this up to scale and the stroke scales up accordingly. Now let's see how the blending works. I'll make some copies of this little guy to show you three different ways you can smooth out the edges of your strokes. So we got this sharp dry border down here. The first and most efficient way to smooth this out is to simply hold back the pressure and spread out the pigment using the exact same tool we've already got set up here. Another way to do this is by pulling the opacity all the way down to zero. In this case pressure doesn't affect as much. Finally, you can set up a brush with a color equal to the background and use that for a similar effect. Of course this method actually applies more pigment to the canvas, even though you can't really see it much. Now, how about color blending? Let's switch the color to something else and try it out. Note that we're still working on the very same layer that we started with. As you can see, the two colors bleed into each other, creating a nice color gradient. So, what if I don't want the colors to blend? As I mentioned, all of these are in a common layer now. If I wanted to get rid of that gradient, all I have to do is pick up the blue stroke, move it to the new layer command and it'll act as if we let the purple ones dry out before adding more paint. As you can see here, we regained the sharp border of the brush. Now let's move the rest of them. Okay, so now that we're on a new layer we gotta be looking at all layers instead of the active ones to make the selection with ease. Alright, so now we can make cross layer selections and move things around without the extra hustle. And the last one... Now, the blue one is obviously on the top here, right? Tap and hold the layer and they can now all be moved to the back collectively. This also reveals the weakness of blending with the background color here. So, now that we know the basics of our new tool here, we can try and see how it performs in a more practical example. I'm just gonna show you one more thing you can do to enhance the look and feel. Go to the menu, and if you select one of these background options with a paper texture, it will be revealed by watercolor strokes, making it appear just that much more natural. Alright, let's start and actually draw something with this. I was looking for a topic for this video and saw a lot of beautiful sketches of perfume bottles with watercolor in them. So I thought I'd give that one a try myself. Let's start from scratch once again, though still leaving the paper texture on the background. I'll start by setting up a pen to sketch with, and I'll switch the layer starting to manual so I'll have full control once I start painting again. 1.6 width should work fine. Yep. Full opacity, that's good. I'll just add a tiny bit of smoothing and we're good to go. So I thought I'd sketch out two bottles, and I want to have some sort of symmetry guidelines, so I'll create another layer for this, and call it center line. Then I'll activate precision mode, select the line tool, and draw a nice vertical line like so. Deactivate precision mode, select this one and adjust it a bit without rotation. And now we can make a copy of this, like that. Cool. 
Now the reason why I wanted those center lines on a separate layer is that now I can easily select and adjust whatever I'm sketching without messing with those center lines. I'll just rename the pen layer to sketch and we're ready to go. Let's sketch out some bottles to paint. When drawing symmetrical objects, it's usually a good idea to copy and mirror the most substantial curves defining the shape of the object. Select and copy the curve you want to mirror, and the commands appear on the toolbar right here. Then just place the other half appropriately. Now I'd like the bottle to be a little more slender, so I'll select the whole thing and tweak the essential shape before going into further detail. You can see me repeating this method several times during the sketching process. so now that we got the line work down, it's time to erase some parts of it. I'll set up a full opacity eraser and look for the most highly reflective areas of the bottle. This helps in selling the appearance of the glass material and also in hiding the fact that I've just simply copied a bunch of these lines. It's also gonna look a lot less messy. Okay, so we got ourselves a couple of rough sketches now, and it's time to get into coloring these guys. I'll start by creating a new layer and make sure it's underneath the sketch layer. My plan is to paint a base coat on both of these, and then follow it up with another layer of watercolor, to add some color and depth to the designs. For the one on the left, I want to have a very opaque, dark tint of blue glass, so I'll start by looking for one that's close on the color wheel. and then see what the recommended colors has to offer. Not quite there yet. Once I got the color I want, I simply start blasting the sketch with color without worrying about going over the edges of the line work. I'm taking advantage of the pressure sensitivity by applying more density in certain areas. I'm also using a couple of different shades of blue at this point, just to get some variation in there. For the one on the right, I'm going with a much lighter blue, since I want this one to have some degree of transparency to it. You'll find out how exactly later on in this video. So now we got the base color down, I'll create another layer and simply call it watercolor. Then I'll open the color wheel again and look for colors that might work well together with the base color. I'm not too worried about getting this right on first try, since I can always pick up the strokes and adjust the colors later on. Then I'll just keep splashing with paint, and as you can see it's no longer blending with the base color, now that we're on a separate layer. Okay, so here we got two layers of paint, and looking at these in focus mode, I can tell that the more highly valued strokes are not in the same layer between the two of these. So I'll start the masking on the dark blue one, meaning that I'll be erasing from the layer called watercolor base. 
When I'm done with that, I'll switch to the other layer and do the same thing on the second bottle. I'm purposefully leaving the second layer of watercolor untouched, just to impress the loose sketchy feel. As I mentioned before, I want the second bottle to be somewhat transparent. To emphasize that, I'm gonna make use of this long curve over here. By making a copy of it, moving it to the layer I've been masking on and then turn it to an eraser stroke. Now I can roughly place it between the two curves over here, making the thickness of the glass stand out a bit. Then I'll simply copy and mirror it, since the curves on the opposite sides are identical. I'll keep working on the thicker glass on the bottom and the label. I can even use the eraser for drawing the pipe inside the bottle. The most important thing when drawing glass are definitely the reflections. So I'll create a layer for that and begin adding those in, using the simplest method I can think of. I'll set up a white fill tool with 35% smoothing and start adding reflections on the surface of the glass. Having set the fill tool smoothing reasonably high, it'll be easy to come up with nice rounded shapes that'll make the glass a bit more believable. Now that the reflections are in place, it's simply a matter of applying an appropriate value of reflection. This can simply be done by selecting and then adjusting the opacity of each one of them. The reflections on the first one came out okay, but the one on the right still requires some work. I'll set up a white marker tool with 50% opacity and use that to add a few more dynamic reflections to it, following the overall shape of the bottle. The more you spend time on adding subtle layers of reflection and maybe adding more value to areas that aren't transparent, the more realistic results you're gonna get. I'm also going back and adjusting the base color of the first one a bit. I'll add some more purplish blue here and there. One thing still left to do is the spray cap on the right. I want it to resemble some sort of polished gold coating, so again I'll start by creating a new layer. And I'll pick up a watercolor brush and narrow it down a bit. I'll start with a simple orange and apply it to the edges of the metal part. Yeah, it's a bit too wide still, maybe now, seems alright. Then I'll switch the color to yellow and blend it with the orange. Next I'll select a black color and start adding those dark reflections seen on highly polished metals. I'm not too worried about getting this texture perfect, since it's quite a tiny detail, I think having the fundamentals in there will do the trick. Once I got the part colored, I'll go through the same masking process I did earlier with the glass bottles. Then I'll switch to the reflections layer and use the white marker and fill tool I used earlier to add some highlights to the part. After some final tweaks, I'll create the last layer for the background, set up a big white airbrush and add a subtle gradient to the background to indicate source of light. And I think we're done. 
Thanks a lot for watching this tutorial, and keep sending your feedback in the comment section. We do read all of them. I hope you learned something new once again. Please subscribe and leave a like. Until next time, keep sketching.